Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be doing a definitive guide on blade grinds Now, for wilderness blades. Now, there are many different types of grinds out there and a bunch of crazy uh, kind of blade shapes. Now, we're really not going to be getting into the shape of the blade or tip shapes such as tanto or non-tanto blades, but we are going to be talking about knife grinds as it relates to wilderness operations. Of course, there's also everyday carry, and that's a whole different mess to talk about. Maybe we'll get into that on another occasion. Asian. But there are five major grinds or primary distinctive grinds out there for wilderness blades. And today we're going to be talking about the pros and the cons to each one of these grinds and hopefully help you guys in your choice for what you want for a bushcrafting survival adventure knife. So as always, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and check out the Patreon. It really does help. Now let's jump right into the definitive guide for grinds. Okay, so the first one we're going to cover is the hollow grind. Now, this is probably the one that you will encounter the least in adventure knives, but or outdoor knives as a whole. But two that come to my mind immediately are the SRK. Some iterations of it, like the SK5, uh, have hollow grinds. Of course, my uh, Pacific by Chris Reeve Knives also has a hollow grind. And the reason why this is a less popular grind for uh, outdoor knives is that a hollow grind essentially has a taper that obviously the blade does taper from the spine to the cutting edge but it hits its lowest point or its most shallow or thinnest point right about in the middle of the grind so you have your grind at your spine and it's coming down coming down hits about the middle of this grind is where it's thinnest and then it kind of thickens back up at the very cutting edge now that gives you some initial or some ability for or that gives you greater structure at the very cutting edge but also means that there is less material behind your cutting edge so essentially the pros to this is that you have a very slicey very precision and very thin cutting edge and not only is your grind not only is your edge uh, very usually quite thin but also the grind that is right behind that cutting edge is very thin so you're not going to have anything kind of getting in the way and this will make a little bit more sense when we talk about the convex grind which is essentially the opposite of this grind but the hollow grind its largest con is that an amount of metal taken out of the middle of this grind it is also inherently the weakest grind on the list now when I say the weakest grind that doesn't necessarily mean that these blades are weak. I have batoned the heck out of my CRK Pacific and my Cold Steel SRK, and they have not broken at all, haven't even budged, but it just means that if the blade is heat treated improperly or if it's too hard, you do run the risk of snapping or cracking the edge because there is less steel supporting that very cutting edge. So it does help and give you a more thin uh, steel stock behind the cutting edge, but that is also a weakness of it. So its pro is also kind of its con. So that is the first grind, and like I said, one that you're probably least likely to encounter, but does exist. As for me and my personal kind of stance with hollow grinds, I've never encountered a bad hollow grind yet, though like I said, there are not that many of them. I would not be opposed to outdoor knives within reason that are hollow grinds. I would just likely stick away from anything that is that has a high or heavy heat treat, things like 60 HRC and higher. Okay, so naturally, the next one on the list is going to be the convex grind. Now, like I said, the convex grind is essentially the inverse of the hollow grind. So what that means is you have your grind, and as the blade is tapering along that grind, or the stock of the steel, I should say, is tapering along that grind to the very cutting edge, essentially the middle of the steel kind of thickens back out, and then it tapers right off to a very fine cutting edge. So the advantage to the convex grind is the fact that you have a very nice, very thin cutting edge, but everything behind that very cutting edge is thick. So you get a lot of spine and kind of uh, middle grind structural rigidity. So these are usually very tough grinds. So you can baton the heck out of these things. You can, you know, chop with them. They're very strong uh, blade grinds. But the thing that you suffer with is that slicing can be okay. But when you try to do things such as feather sticking, when you try to 
set that blade uh, or the very cutting edge against a piece of wood per se that you want to cut on, you're going to be hitting the grind or the thicker stock of steel in that grind. So you have to kind of learn how to use a convex grind. And if you go from say a flat grind or a full flat grind, which we'll talk about in just a second, um, you'll have to kind of retrain your hand to hold it at just that perfect angle so that you get the cutting edge, but not the uh, middle portion of your grind. So that's the biggest uh, disadvantage to them. The biggest advantage, like I said, is going to be that they're very tough, very resilient edges, even to higher HRCs, because you have a lot of support with that grind behind the cutting edge. In addition to that, the other kind of disadvantage to convex grinds is that because you do not have a traditional bevel, like a lot of, like every other knife featured here, except for the Scandi, um, in a way, which we'll talk about, but but, um, so essentially none of these knives have, or so no true convex grind has a bevel. So what that means is when it's time to resharpen this knife, you have to either use a piece of leather or sandpaper or some type of sharpening system that uh, kind of conforms to the convex grind. So sharpening is difficult with these. Uh, use can be difficult without training or without experience, like using the blade. Uh, and so the pros, like I said, are that it is strong, but there are quite a few cons to convex ground blades. Um, one thing to mention too, that is also a bit of a pro to these is that because uh, the slicing in these, the slicing with convex grinds is usually pretty good too, uh, because so long as that whatever you're cutting or slicing doesn't come up onto the grind, you still do have a very thin, very precise edge, which does help with chopping too. So the convex grind is a very unique grind. You will probably find more convex grind or ground blades than hollow ground, but uh, convex grind blades or convex ground blades are pretty rare as well. You'll usually only see them on more expensive knives, things like Bark River knives or Falknevens, all the Falkneven, like the A1, S1, and F1, uh, the A1 pictured here, uh, all have convex grinds to them. So that is kind of the convex grind. So the next one we're gonna talk about is the flat grind. And the flat grind is essentially, so the flat grind, or it is also known as the saber grind, is a pretty traditional, pretty standard uh, way to grind a knife. So if you, especially you're using a jig to grind out your blade, this is one of the first grinds that you're probably going to learn. It is a very easy and very good grind. It's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. So essentially how this works is you have a straight tapered grind down to a bevel. So the bevel is going to produce the very final cutting edge, but that grind essentially is just removing material and reducing the thickness of the stock of steel behind the very cutting edge. Now, because this doesn't have any fancy geometry going on behind the cutting edge, like I said, this is essentially a jack of trades, master of, or jack of all trades, master of none. So the slicing performance is okay. The batoning and structural rigidity of the blade, usually depending on the steel, the temper, and the thickness, but assuming that all things are equal and just fine, the thickness or the structural rigidity of the blade will be just fine. You won't really see these knives, you know, breaking edges, maybe tips, but you won't really see any edge breakage and you won't really see uh, too much problem with a straight flat grind. Now, like I said, because this is a just jack of all trades kind of generic um, grind, this is not the best grind for every situation. It does have harder field maintenance than the Scandi grind, but not really that much harder um, because you do have this bevel to work with. So there is that. Um, overall, it's just a really generalized good grind to go with. Not the best, but not the worst. And its pros definitely would be that it is capable at doing many different tasks. It's a very well-rounded. So if you're going to be doing things like carving, feather sticking, batoning, this grind will do it all okay. Okay. Once again, things like the convex grind will be better for batoning specifically because that grind is kind of pushing a piece of wood apart and it has a finer 
edge. So if you're going to be chopping with a uh, flat grind, obviously you wouldn't use something this small, but larger knives, uh, the convex grind is still going to perform better. Hollow grind is also going to perform better at slicing than this because it has less material around the center of the grind. So once again, it's just a really generalized grind, very easy to mass produce or to begin and learn how to make knives. Usually that's where you will see flat grinds and usually you will see flat grinds on knives that are cheaper and more generic because it's a much easier grind to make. Not to once again discredit, there are fantastic knives and custom knives that also use flat grinds. It's not a bad grind, it's just not the best is all I'm trying to say. So now we're gonna move on to the full flat grind. So the full flat grind is the same basic principle as the as the flat grind that we just mentioned. So with the flat grind, it's a grind that comes down from some point on the steel stock and goes to the edge. The full flat grind just signifies that it starts, the grind starts at the very spine of the edge and goes down. So usually, and you will see, and I'll, I'll do a close up on this one, but usually with a flat grind, you will see some portion of steel stock thickness in the side profile of the blade, whereas a full flat grind immediately starts its grind down to the cutting edge or down to the bevel at the spine. So the biggest pro to full flat grinds over flat grinds are that you have an edge that usually is thinner uh, when it gets to the bevel. So you get a little bit better slicing performance out of a full flat grind than you do a normal flat grind. Aside from that, they're basically the same grind. Um, they're very easy to make. And once again, you'll see these on a lot of mid-range to even uh, cheaper knives or less expensive knives. Doesn't necessarily mean they're bad blades or bad grinds. Just means that they're easier to mass produce and easier to make. Now, the biggest disadvantage to a full flat grind is usually because the grind is going from the very spine you're not going to have any tip support so the tip of the blade will be weaker also i should mention that usually on convex grinds this is also the case uh, that the tips are weaker and so you do have to keep in mind that you are trading some uh, structural rigidity and some strength within the knife for that precision so you do have a finer tool or a tool that is capable of doing finer tasks but you are also losing strength and rigidity so keep that in mind if you are wanting a knife to pry with or if you're going to be hard on your knife this is something that you'll probably a full flat grind is probably a grind you're going to want to avoid now i will say there is kind of a special exception with se and their rowan heat treat uh, the se and rowan heat treat is usually around 56 hrc so these knives uh, you can pretty much bend the tip and you're not going to break it now i will say that you will likely bend the tip and that you'll have to bend it back so it's not great to do and would not recommend bending the tip of your knife but uh, you will not usually snap the tip of a 1095 Rowan heat treated SE knife, usually. So that is a little bit of a kind of disclaimer with SE knives, but by and large with every other flat grind, I would not attempt to do anything with the tip because it does not have any reinforcement or structural rigidity. So that is the full flat grind. I do like the full flat grind, especially for doing things like skinning or natural resource processing. It does a really great job at those tasks. Masks. Okay, so the last one on the list and the last major grind, and of course there are many other more niche grinds than these, but these are the major ones. And so the last one is the Scandi grind. This is one that you're probably most likely to encounter. The other two, the flat grind and the full flat grind, are pretty common, but the Scandi grind is kind of uh, the hallmark for outdoor and bushcrafting knives especially. So you will likely encounter a lot of Scandinavian ground or Scandi grind blades or some degree of iteration. Tops does a lot of Scandi Vex, which is a mixture of convex and Scandi grind but you will encounter a lot of Scandi grinds uh, in the outdoor knife field. So essentially what a Scandi grind is, is that it is 
So essentially, it's kind of like a flat grind, but it is usually done much lower on the blade stock of steel, and it is ground straight to the very cutting edge. So like we saw with the convex grind, where it did not have a bevel or a secondary angle at the very cutting edge, the true proper Scandi grind will also not have a bevel on it. And so essentially, that just means that whatever degree it was ground at from factory is what it has, and that is its cutting edge. Now, pros to this are a few. You do have easy you do have ease of sharpening. It is very easy to sharpen these knives because they have a singular angle. So all you have to do is lay it on your sharpener and sharpen at that one consistent angle. The other thing that makes Scandi knives really great is they are probably one of the best blades or grinds for carving. They bite into wood very well, very deep. They feather stick very easily. They even baton pretty well. And I think that's why the Scandi grind is so prevalent is because because it performs bushcraft and camping tasks so well, better than any of these other knives in particular. Now, the disadvantages are going to be in, and I should say mild disadvantages, because they're not really too big of a disadvantage, but things like game processing, things like resource processing, because the blade is going to be reasonably thick behind the cutting edge because there is no additional bevel or there's no you know grind because the grind starts so low on the blade stock uh, usually there is quite a bit of drag when you are cutting through materials so do keep that in mind that's kind of what makes the blade so good at carving but when you're trying to do things like skin a game animal or when you're trying to process things like mushrooms or fungi, uh, do keep in mind that these are probably not going to be the best blades to do it. Now, once again, a sharpened edge will cut, so it's not a huge deal, and you can certainly do it, but if you primarily, if you're going out primarily to say do hunting, I would probably recommend against a scanty knife or scanty grind in favor for something like an an SE or another full flat ground blade. So that's kind of the delineation and the biggest con to them is that they're not as good at the, they're not as good at those tasks. Lastly, the other disadvantage or con to Scandi, Scandi ground knives, which isn't usually a problem, is that there can be a weakness at the cutting edge. Because there is a lack of bevel with this grind, there is no support at the very cutting edge. So that means that the, the very cutting edge on one of these blades or one of these grinds is going to be unsupported. And as we have seen with a few examples of higher Rockwell hardness treated Scandi grinds, that can lead to blade chips or breakage because there's just no support from the steel behind the very cutting edge. So understand that that can also kind of come into play and affect its performance. Now, I will say that's usually not the case because most Scandi ground knives are made out of things like high carbon steel and with things like O1 or A2 or 1095, you're really not going to see that as much. It also depends, though, to a great deal how hard that steel is um, treated to. So if you're running something that's over 60 HRC, it's probably going to be more prone to chipping or breaking as opposed to rolling and bending. So that is essentially the comparison between so that is essentially my guide to blade grinds. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Hopefully it was helpful. There are, like I've pointed out, many more blade grinds out there, but they're usually more custom, more niche, and less uh, widespread. This should give you guys a pretty good idea of what you're getting into for, I would say, about 90% of outdoor fixed blade knives. And... Uh, kind of breaks down the pros and the cons to each of them. There are, like I said, pros to each grind and there are cons to each grind. And depending on what you are achieving or what you are wanting to achieve out of your knife or what kind of field goals you have will largely dictate what type of grind you should go for. Hopefully this kind of helps you guys, hopefully this grind, 
Hopefully this guide helps you guys kind of understand the pros and cons to each knife so you can make an informed decision and not just buy a knife. Of course, all sharpened edges will cut. So at the end of the day, it's not the largest deal, but there is a noticeable performance difference, especially if you're like someone like me who owns knives in each and every grind and actually several knives in each and every grind mentioned, you know, you will notice a performance difference between switching from something like my CRK Pacific to the Battle Lore to to the A1 to the SC6. They are all going to cut wood or cut different uh, materials just a little bit differently. Some will cut it with greater ease, some will have greater drag, some need to be held at certain angles, and others don't. So there is a minor differences between each and every one, and of course there is some structural rigidity that it goes into each one. Some are more structurally rigid, some are less, or some are more weak, some are a lot stronger. So hopefully this gives you guys an idea of what you're getting into when it comes to picking it a outdoor knife. As always, God bless and I'm out.